All right, so um, this is the second part of the video. Uh, so hopefully you watch the IPv4 address video, very basic video on IPv4 addresses. Uh, make sure you understand uh, the two parts and how it's all constructed and how long it is. So on this uh, video, we're going to cover the um, subnet mask, another very, very important thing to understand. Um, we're going to cover it in a real basic way. Uh, we're not going to talk about uh, anything real deep. Later, I'm going to make some more videos to talk about like CIDR notation and some other things that are important to know. So right now, just a real basic video on a subnet mask and its singular uh, usage. So. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so um, here's the next video. Um, so hopefully you watched the uh, video from before, the IPv4 uh, video. So now we're gonna be talking about the uh, IPv4 subnet mask. Um, so uh, again, they go hand in hand. So another review from the last video, uh, an IPv4 address is a 32-bit address broken up into four parts, right, four parts. So you've got uh, one, two, three, four, four parts. Um, eight bits each, right? And each part, uh, each uh, part is called an octet. And, f and the max range of numbers uh, for each octet is zero to two fifty-five, and of course in decimal. So if it was all zeros, um, all zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that'd be a zero. That'd be a, obviously a decimal zero. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ones would be two fifty-five. Um, and then we talked about how. Um, an address has two parts, a network portion and a node portion, and um, how we differentiate the two is with uh, a subnet mask. So we, again, we talked about that a little bit about in the last video, but now we're going to really talk about the subnet mask and, and its job. Um, again, I have this address here, and if I told you this was a class C address, we would know that it would have a certain type of mask associated with it. But if I told you it was not a classful address, that it, that it wasn't follow, following what are called the classical boundaries, which we're going to talk about in the next slide, then you really wouldn't know what portion of this address is network or node. Now, of course, I gave you um, this two examples here, and I, I've said that this one represents the network and this one represents the node, right? Because um, I've told you that. But if I would just give you an IP address like this and not tell you the mask that is also needed to define the two parts, you couldn't separate this address with uh, with just this information. If someone just gave you this with no mask, right? They didn't give you the mask portion, then you wouldn't know what portion of this address is networking, what portion is node. It could be this could be the network portion, and this could be the node, or, or whatever. So it's important to um, understand what the mask does. So let's go ahead and and, and talk about that real quick. Um, so here we go. So an uh, IPv4 mask, right? So again, 30 bits. There, it's also 32 bits long. So um, always ones from left to right. So here's an example of a mask, and this would be what we, we would call if it's a classful system. This would be a class C mask, right? Um, and we'll talk about the classes in a few minutes. So notice we have we have ones from left to right. All ones from left to right to this point here. I missed it. Almost got it. From to here, right? And then the these would signify the the host bits or the I like to call it um, the node node bits, and this would be the network bits, right? So um, so it's important to realize that um, a subnet mask is always going to be ones, and there's a reason why it has to be ones um, because um, it's uh, we're going to do an operation on the next slide called an AND, and that's kind of important. So if I were to draw this, like let's say this octet here. And I were to draw one 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 zero one one one, right? And try to pass this off as a mask, it wouldn't work. There can never be a zero in the center anywhere uh, in a mask like this. It has to be has to be consistent ones from left to right, and then there can be you know, zeros, but they have to be outside that mask area wherever we're going to mask. So um, it's important to remember that. So it's always ones from left to right. Then I drew, I've also uh, uh, defined some classful masks real quick. So remember that uh, we deal with um, um, uh, five types of IP ranges uh, that are called classful ranges, A, B, C, and there's also a D and an E, right? And uh, so D is for multicasting, right? multicast addresses, and E is for science or for experimentation. So we don't, we're not using those two very much other than we use the multicast quite a bit, but not, not for uh, giving addresses to networks. 
So notice that, of course, hopefully you've, you've learned this, that um, the class four ranges for IPv4 are A, B, and C. And it all has to do with the very first octet, right? The very first octet in IP address represents the, the, what range it's in. So I drew some quick IP addresses here. So this would be a class A address, right? And this number here is inside this range, right? And so with a class A, this is its default mask, 255000. So if you could picture eight ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, period, and then all zeros, the rest would be zeros. Um, so uh, 20, it would be 24 zeros on this side, of course, separated by colons, and then the eight here. So that would be a class A subnet mask. And then we have the class B, right? So again, the range for a class B um, is, is listed here. And all, again, it all has to do with the first, this first octet defines it. So this is a class B address, and this would be a class B subnet mask. So that'd be 16 ones, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the rest would be 16 zeros, right? Oh, the rest would be zeros. Um, and so that would be a class B um, subnet mask for, again, using a classful system. And I keep on emphasizing that because later we're gonna talk about classless systems with uh, subnetting, so we'll talk about that later. And then here's the class C range, and this would be a class C address, right? The first octet is in this range right here, 199 is in there somewhere. And then we have the uh, classful um, C range uh, mask, which I have on put have here on the on the whiteboard already. So um, it'd be 24 ones, always from left to right, and then eight ones in the host area. So um, so the mask defines what portion of the IP address is network. So obviously, notice how this octet and this octet represent a class A, and then these two octets and these two go together, and then there's three, and then there's three. Now, so there's kind of a pattern, right? Uh, so um, it's important to, to see that um, and realize that it's ones, right? And, for, and then the zeros rep, uh, uh, represent the, the host area. So I want to get into a little more depth on that. So what I want to do is, uh, what does a mask use? So I'm writing out here. What does a mask use to do its job? It uses a device called the AND. And we're going to talk about AND. The, a Boolean AND is a mathematical function computers use to expose, here we go, to expose the network portion of an IPv4 address and mask the node portion. So let's take a look at a let's look at a uh, and real quick. So this is a boolean and, uh, and it is it's, it's not like the word let's go and go somewhere else. So let's do something and something else. You know, it's not the word and. It's a and d like all caps. And it's um, what it is is a is a uh, boolean function of times. Uh, so if you so if you notice in the middle of this they put the and is um, times. It's a times function, right? So um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have these this, these two uh, data streams, right? And so we have an input, so this would be input, and this would be the output. So in and out, right? And this is what a computer uses to m find out what uh, portion of the address is network, right? Your computer, com your computer needs to know what network it's in. And we assign an IP address, right? So each computer is assigned an IP address, whether we do it statically or, um, or we do it um, dynamically um, through DHCP. So it has, it has an IP address and a mask. They ha it have to have, you have to have both. The computer needs to know both because it's going to use the mask to know what network am I in, right? I, it needs to know what network it is in case if it wants to go somewhere else, right? So this is how it really works, right? So, so on top, I have the IP address of this computer, right? 192.168.10.65. Uh, so that would be the address that has been assigned it. That's... Well, I'll give it all right up here. 192.168.10.65 is the uh, address here. Um, and then we're going to use a class uh, C mask, a standard C mask. Uh, again, we're talking about just classical systems. And if you notice, um, it's almost like a times table down here, right? So if this is all ones, right, down here, and whatever we, we times this into with, well, whatever we times this with at ones, that number won't change, right? Like, let's go to decimal, right? 10 times 1 is 10. Yeah, there's a no-brainer, right? And 10 times 0 is 0, right? So, again, first grade math. I just want to point that out. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to send this these two 32-bit um, uh, numbers, right? Because this is 32 bits and this is 32 bits. And we're going to send them into the AND. 
and it's going to times each each bit by the one below it. Okay, it's going to one times zero, zero times zero, zero times zero, zero. What I'm saying is go one times all the way down. It's going to do them all as they enter into this and, and the out the product that spits out of the other side is going to be the network portion of the address. And notice that let me get rid of all this muck over here. Notice that this portion of the address is now gone because we times it by zeros, right? That's a no-brainer. So, um, so that's what is used in a computer to help n the computer know what network I'm, I'm in. So, right? so this computer has this address assigned to it, and it also knows with this mask that it, it is in the 192.168.10.0 network. And that's how the computer knows what network it's in. So that's really important because the computer needs to know this So in case it needs to go somewhere else. So let's look at this next slide real quick. So here's an example of a computer that wants to go somewhere else. So here we go. So this is CNN.com. I just picked it randomly. And that really is CNN.com's uh, address, 23.235.44.73. This is a class A address, obviously. Um, this is a public address, public address, right? And here's my computer, and let's say it's at home. You're at home in your computer, right? And you have a private address, a 192 address. We're, gonna, we're not going to talk about NAT, though, but just, just don't worry about that. So, so uh, obviously, I have a 192.168.10.65 is my address, and I have a 255.255.255.0 mask, right? And my default gateway is always my router. So this is my router right here. That's my router, right? And I'm connected to this switch, right? And my router is connected to this switch, too. And this point right here is this address, 192.168.10.1. So that is my computer's default gateway right there, right? So, so I'll just real quick, make sure everybody understands. That's the IP address of my computer, the mask that I have assigned to this computer, the default gateway for this computer, I assigned it. And here it is, that router, that's my way out, right? So uh, remember that your default gateway is your way out of your network, right? And so here we go. I go, I am in my browser and I want to go to www.cnn.com. My DNS server translates that into 23.235, excuse me, dot 44.73, right? My address is 192.168.10.65. I know it's here, but I'm going to write it again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my mask to myself, and I'm going to apply it to the where I want to go. Right, and my computer is going to go. I'm in the 192.168.10 network. I want to go to the 23.235.44 network, and my computer says we're not in the same network. Right, since it knows this, right, it knows that we're not in the same network. What it does is it ARPs address res resolution protocol. It ARPs its default gateway. Right, it says, hey default gateway, I need your MAC address. My default gateway sends its MAC address. We're going to talk about MAC um, MAC addresses later. It sends back its MAC address. Now my computer says, hey, default gateway, I'm going to send you some data. Please get me to CNN.com. So it sends the data over here, right? Maybe a, a web request, right? Uh, I want your web page. And then the router sends it on its way, and it will make it to CNN.com. So that's what a mask does for you. It allows the computer, your computer, to know what network it's in. And if it wants to go somewhere else, it knows that it has to go to the default gateway to get out of the network. Now, let's just say that we had another scenario. So let me erase on this real quick. Let's just say, just for fun, that we had another computer on this network over here, right? So let's put another computer here, right? And its address is 192.168.10.40, right? And it's connected to this switch also. And this computer wants to talk to this computer. So it says, I want to talk to 192.168.10.40, right? It applies that mask again to itself, its mask, and the destination says, oh, we're in the same network. So it starts ARPing locally in its network to find this computer. So anyway, so that's the importance of a subnet mask. Uh, again, a very, it has a very singular um, reason for existing, to help a computer know what network it's in, to, to, to separate or differentiate the network portion of an IP address to the node portion. All right, so again, uh, hopefully that covered that uh, subject for you. Very short video. Take the quiz and uh, move on to the next video set.